What's up guys? In this video, I'm going to show how you can automate Word document creation process through Excel and Mail Merge. Let's say that you work at a cash receipt or account receivable and you have to send out these weekly letters to your clients informing them that they are entitled to a refund in this amount, just like what you're seeing here. If you had to do this for hundreds of clients on a weekly basis, then that can get tiring very fast. Well, as long as the formatting of the Word documents are consistent, then you can automate the whole process to something called mail merge. To get started on the mail merge, I'm going to close this Word document up um, and don't save and go to this Excel file here that contains all the data that we need to create the Word document template. The worksheet has a range of cells here that contains the details for the client data and the check data. And what we want to do is that we want to transfer each data from each row here into its own Word document. And in order to do that, we're going to go to this Word document here called Mail Merge Word Template. And the first thing you would do is that you would go to Mailings tab here and you want to click on the Start Mail Merge to set up the template for like how you want the documents to look or like what you're trying to mail merge. And we're going to like mail merge just letters here. And then we're going to try to like retrieve the data from the Excel file. So I'm going to go to Select Recipients here and I'm going to use an existing list to reference the Excel file that I showed you before. So click on this and it's going to pop up the dialog box or the file picker. I'm going to go to the folder path um, containing the Excel file called Mail Merge Excel Template. Click on this and it's going to use a SQL query connection to connect to the table in sheet one. And if it identifies like a range of cell that looks like a table or an actual table, it's going to reference it here. So I'm going to click on OK. Now this is like a connection point between the board document and the Excel file. And now we have access to these buttons here that we didn't before in the mailings tab. The main button we want to look at for this situation is the insert merge field. And the insert merge field says add a field from your recipient list to the document. So the recipient list is the value from the Excel file to the document or the word document, such as last name, home phone, or company name. And when you finish the mail merge, Word will replace these fields with actual information from the Excel file. If we want you to lay out the Word document as the client name, then the address, and then starting with dear, what you can do is that you can go to insert merge field, click on the client name for this line here, and the client name from that specific row will appear, and then press enter for new line. And the next one will be the address name. Then we're going to have the city name here, and then City name followed by state, well, followed by comma and then state and comma. And then the zip code will be here. And for our letter, we're going to start off with dear. We're going to reference the client name directly. So we're going to select client again, comma, and then press enter again. And we can say something like, dear client, we are sending you a refund check of the dollar symbol here and we want to reference the actual amount of the refund check so we're going to go to the insert merge field and put in the check amount of this amount with the invoice number and reference the invoice number here and let's see and we can do period then the check number is this and the check date is this one here and we can just close it off with a period and press enter for new line, enter again. Well, before we do that, we can do another sentence here stating that if you have any questions, please reach out or please contact us by email um, to cash receipts at company.com and period and press enter. And then you can just say best and you can close it off with the company name. Um, let's just call this company name. And now we're done inserting all the fields from the Excel file and also setting up the basic template. And if we do like, um, well, in this section here, we can do like a preview result where we can view the merge data. So if I click on this, we have all the, the names, address, the amount, invoice number, check number, and check date here. And if I go to the next page here, by going to like, by clicking this button, we have the next entry from the Excel file and click on it again and next entry again. And this one will go to the last page automatically, which is this one. And if you want to go back to the first page, we can click on this button here. And if you want to actually create the 
Word document itself. You can go to finish and merge and click on edit individual documents. And it's going to merge to like a new Word document. So you can choose all pages appearing or you can select a specific page or a range of page. So I'm going to select all page instead. Click OK. And if I do that, we get this new Word document called Letters 1 that shows all the pages um, for each entry in that Excel file. And there should be about five pages here in total. So let's go back up. Now, you'll notice that we don't really have a comma here. We have a currency amount here, but there's no commas. That can look awkward when sending it to someone. So I'm going to go back to the other Word document here. And I'll move my mouse to the number here. Do a right click. Go to toggle field codes. And right before this closing curly brace, I'm going to do a space and do a backslash hashtag comma zero point zero zero and do a right click again update field now we get the updated number with the comma separated values instead so you can double check by going through each records here and each of the numbers are separated by comma now and you can do a finish and, and merge again edit individual documents and just click ok and you get letters two this time but with the updated numbers that's like separated by comma. What if we want to do update the email merge to include more clients or less clients? Well, we can do that by going back to the Excel file and updating the range of data here. I'm going to copy the data in row two and paste it in row seven. That way, instead of creating five documents from the email merge, we're going to be creating six Word documents instead. I'll just save the workbook here and go back to the email merge template for Word. Close the document and reopen it again from my folder. You can just click on save and I'm gonna click on mail merge again, the word version. It's gonna open up and it's gonna to try to run the SQL query again to refresh all the data. And now we can go over to mailings and if you go to the preview result, which is on by default and go to the last page here, we have the sixth page, which is exactly the same as the first one before. So this is the page that we copied and pasted from the Excel file. If you wanted to decrease the number of pages from the Word document mail merge, then you can just remove the rows from the Excel file, close the mail merge Word template again, and then reopen it back up so the SQL query can refresh itself. That's pretty much the overview for how to do a mail merge in Word with Excel to create these standardized letters. If you're constantly creating these Word documents that are formatted the same, then you can use mail merge to automate the whole process in seconds and send out the emails containing the documents quickly. All you have to do is set up the Excel file containing the data and make sure that the number of columns in the Excel file doesn't change or you would have to update the fields on the mail merge again. With that said, if you guys found this video to be helpful, then please like and comment down below what else you'd want to see. And if you haven't already, subscribe. Until then, I'll see you guys next time.